With us now is Colonel Cedric Layton, CNN military analyst and former member of the Joint Staff at the Pentagon. Cedric, 300,000 new troops, albeit these are reservists, these are people who are already inside Russia. What and where would they make a difference on the battlefield in Ukraine? So, John, good morning. It really depends on the kinds of troops that they're going to bring into this battle space of Ukraine here. So where they could make a difference would potentially be in these areas right here. What they might do is they might be used to secure uh, these particular areas. Uh, now, this, of course, is where Ukraine has made significant gains, so they'd have a bit of a difficult time in this area. But what the Russians can do is once you go into these areas that they control, in essence, the land bridge from this part of Russia all the way to Crimea, which is right down here, those are the areas where they could make a difference if they are the right specialties. So that would include infantry troops, uh, tank troops, armored uh, per, uh, armored personnel drivers, uh, and also uh, infantry folks. So these are the kinds of things that uh, and uh, kinds of capabilities that they'd be looking at. And they would primarily be used here unless Putin wants to do something uh, through Belarus or through this part of Russia. We don't see any movement like that, but those are, of course, possibilities for Russia's movement. Cedric, one of the other things that we've heard is that Putin may be extending the troops who are already on service. What would that do to morale? If you're a Russian soldier serving in Ukraine already, you know, in retreat and already there longer than you thought you would be, what would that do to morale if you're told all of a sudden you can't go home? Oh, that destroys morale, John. That's one of the worst things. So, you know, let's take a look, for example, at what would happen in the east. Uh, so the Russians are trying to move into this area right here, the town of Bakhmut. And what they would be doing is trying to advance these forces. So you're trying to advance forces who are tired, who have been in this fight for months now, for seven months or more. Uh, and they would, and remember, they were standing there even in December. So uh, you're talking about a bunch of troops that are going to be incredibly tired when it comes to uh, doing this kind of thing. And they're trying to respond to the Ukrainian offensives that are happening here and also in the south. Uh, the Ukrainians are trying to go here. Uh, the Russians will have to stop them if they have any hope of, of trying to do anything here. And it's, uh, it's going to be a really tough thing for them to do. And I think it's uh, very difficult for the Russians to get to that point. And, and those reservists alone, too, there are some real questions about their, about their readiness. Exactly, Erica. That's, that's one of the key things. So when you're uh, planning something like this, you want to make sure that you have people who have just left the military, people who have come into uh, specialties that they could potentially use, everything from IT specialists to logistics specialists, which of course they would need a lot of. Uh, my feeling is, is that they're going to have a really tough time mm -hmm. filling those ranks and doing it as quickly as they need to. And one of the things you're hearing from NATO officials is they see this as a sign of weakness, an admission of weakness from Russia that they have to to do this. So, Cedric, there's also this nuclear threat, very direct nuclear threat, where Putin is saying, you know, if you violate Russia's territorial integrity, then there very well may be a nuclear response, not bluffing. How serious do you take that, especially in conjunction now with these referenda, where you have those areas that you have shaded right there, which will very likely vote, albeit in a bit of a sham vote, to join Russia within the next week? That's right, John. So this area, these areas right here that uh, that we're looking at, these are the areas. There are four of them to include the Donbas region, uh, as well as areas that they've captured in, as part of this land bridge. These are the areas from Kherson all the way up to the north in uh, the Luhansk area. They are going to be the ones that are going to be voting on these referenda. Uh, when Putin made the statement that he's going to protect Russian territory, he means he's going to protect this part in addition to all of this, the large expanse of the, of the Russian landmass. So when he's doing that, he is saying, this is mine. Uh, NATO's reaction to this is not going to be favorable, and the risk of escalation as a result of that, John, is going to be incredibly high. All right, Colonel Cedric Layton, great to have you on this morning. Thank you so much for letting us see where all this is happening.